we're here at the Auto Expo 2025 and we have a special guest with us, Mr. Anand Kulkarni from Tata Passenger Electric Mobility. Anand, thank you very much thank for you. talking to AutoCard Professional. I'm very happy and thank you for calling me over. A pleasure. So first thing straight off the bat, Anand, you know, if you could talk us through about uh, the active platform, you know, you've brought a couple of models on the platform now. So the active EV architecture. So if you could just give us a technological, you know, overview about the, the key aspects of the active EV architecture. So, uh, Frank, as we have uh, spoken earlier, the architecture itself is comprising of four layers. Mm. And the active EV is a pure EV platform. Uh, what do we mean by pure EV? It means a platform that is dedicatedly manufactured, dedicatedly designed for an electric vehicle only. Mm -hmm. We uh, also use uh, bits and pieces or some parts of uh, the common architecture on the top hat, but that right. doesn't mean that it is a conversion vehicle. Right. And that's how we had laid down yeah. uh, quite some time back, yeah. generation one, generation two, and the generation three yeah. approach. So the active is a part of our generation two, mm -hmm. which is a pure EV platform. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this platform or uh, the architecture of a pure EV mean? It starts at the chassis level. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when you have a chassis, uh, at the chassis level, you need orthogonal batteries, mm -hmm. you need more uh, geometrically uh, symmetrical batteries so that you can have the ability to do any cell or cell format or cell chemistry. Mm -hmm. That is one part. Right. Of course, you also have the ability to do a, a multi-drive uh, arrangement. So mm -hmm. you could either have a front-wheel drive or you could have a rear-wheel drive or you could have a all-wheel drive. Right. So this is not something that you can have with traditional architecture. Ice, yeah. Then the, comes the second layer, which is about the layer for propulsion. Mm -hmm. So whether you can have, uh, again, this is where the chassis and the second layer interact with each other for the drive trains. Mm -hmm. That also means that you have to do different suspensions, you have to do different uh, uh, floor pans, yeah. and th it also gives you the freedom to uh, do things like trunk, for example, mm. which is not easily possible in a, a native architecture or right. traditional architecture. Right. The third layer is that of uh, END, the electrical and electronics architecture, where mm -hmm. you talk about advanced, uh, uh, advanced autonomy features, yep. you talk about uh, common architecture for power electronics, you talk about charging standards, you talk about charging speeds, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And the last layer is that of cloud, which is how this car will interact, collect data, give features, additional features, arcade.ev, etc. Right. So the Active EV uh, has been a platform that we introduced last year, right. along with the Punch EV. And uh, we are working on two aspects. One is to introduce all of our new cars on the Active EV. In fact, uh, today with the uh, showcase of the Harrier EV, yeah. we are going to a layer further, which mm -hmm. is an Active EV Plus. Okay. Uh, and therefore, it, it brings in more enablements, more capabilities, more sophistication into the Active uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the second one is that we are also taking all our newer cars of electric on this new uh, platform. So mm -hmm. the punch was the first one. Right. The curve. Yeah. Standing here, is, right here. Yeah. Right here is the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we also did a, a 45 kilowatt upgrade on the Nexon. Uh, Nexon. Right. And a lot of these uh, elements uh, got transferred into that. Okay. Uh, likewise, when we do the uh, Harrier EV, yeah. it is active plus. Mm -hmm. And so these are capabilities, enablements on a pure EV platform that give, enable you to give the best uh, in that particular powertrain, in right. that particular battery, in terms of range, charging speeds right. to the customers. Right. Could you could you detail a bit on this Active Plus architecture that we are going to see right. on the Harrier EV? So we, as I said, we have four layers. Yeah. So let's talk about the uh, uh, chassis layer. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the chassis layer is uh, completely reformed uh, and uh, you have uh, a uh, uh, rear uh, uh, multi-link suspension. You have a front suspension that is uh, specifically tuned for uh, uh, the, the, the loads on the car. Mm -hmm. You also have a large capacity of uh, the frunk. We're not discussing technical details today right, right. because let's keep it for a little later, sure. but uh, that's been enabled. You also have uh, the ability to do uh, uh, all-wheel drive. All drive. So there's a, a massive uh, unit at the back. There's a a corresponding unit in the front, mm -hmm. it can do uh, 500 Newton meter of torque, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to be one uh, uh, very, very powerful performance. Right. Then we talk about the layer, uh, and by the way, the suspension itself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, because it has to handle the masses and it has to uh, be, uh, we call it uh, regal and rugged. Okay. Uh, and the, those are the kind of right. uh, words that best describe the product. Mm -hmm. 
So in order to manage this, we need to have a comfortable ride. Right. And uh, it's not about uh, only capability, but it's also about comfort. Right. So the suspension manages that with uh, frequency dependent damping and okay. things of that sort, which right. uh, you get into it. Right. Then the second layer is that of propulsion, and I alluded to that. Yeah. You have a 500 Newton meter uh, torque. Yeah, all wheel drive. All wheel drive, yeah. uh, which essentially gives you fantastic capabilities. Correct. The third unit is, uh, or the third layer is that of E&E. Uh, the E&D architecture. So uh, on the Harrier.ev, uh, the, that layer is going to be significantly enhanced to bring okay. capability features. Mm -hmm. So today we saw the summon feature. Right. The summon feature essentially allows you to summon the car right. if it is parked into a narrow parking right. uh, uh, space where you can't open the doors, right. etc. Right. It can also uh, you can also make the car summon in reverse in a right. sense. Uh, ask right. me to go back. Auto park. Auto park. Right. And uh, auto park. Uh, auto park itself has a lot of additional functionalities. So those functionalities will also come into the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, the power electronics is undergoing a change. The car is going to be chargeable at a much faster pace. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then along with that is the cloud layer. So you see, this is the plus in right. the uh, architecture that we've already done. Active plus, on yes. the, that we're going to see on the Harrier EV. Correct. Right. Correct. And you mentioned that it's going to be a very significant uh, modification or uh, more innovation in the third layer, which is the e, &E architecture. Yes. So, uh, like, are we moving towards more sophisticated uh, zonal computing already, or do you think there's still more time when we uh, look at those sort of architectures? So, uh, we, we are going to move uh, towards the, the zonal uh, uh, architecture, but I would just say, Mayank, that there are bits and pieces and details which we would want to hold back mm -hmm. for when we actually bring right. the product out at launch. Right. Uh, today is an unveil, and I've right. already revealed right. to you what Right. Broad features are right. so for the time being, I, sure. I would uh, allow it to rest. Sure, me. sure. If I may come to the curve, EV Anand, you know, in this also you have a lot of technology which is packed inside. You know, you Absolutely. have ADAS Level Two Plus, and you know, several technologies in terms of safety, be it infotainment, connectivity. So, if we talk about the E and E architecture of the curve. So how sophisticated is it and you know, do you see further uh, scope of you know, further embellishment on this, on this platform itself? So uh, the curve already, like you mentioned, uh, there is a certain level of autonomy uh, and yeah. to, uh, EDAS is there. And yeah. I would say it is one of the most refined EDAS. Yes. That's the feedback that all of you have given Absolutely, us. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it doesn't surprise you, it doesn't yeah. make you feel an, a certain level of abruptness. Yeah. So that is uh, something which is very good. Our customers really mm -hmm. appreciate us for that. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, as, as our uh, traffic conditions are, I would say, chaotic, yeah. uh, sometimes if it is not tuned well, it can tend to surprise you. But yeah. this car, uh, certainly yeah. uh, not uh, one to surprise. Yeah. The second thing is that uh, the END architecture delivers in terms of what kind of uh, feature enablements you can do. So, for example, you have one of the widest screens. Touch screens, uh, uh, yeah. Touch screens. Yeah. And uh, it also has uh, voice commands yeah. in multiple languages. Yeah. It also has uh, the what three words, so yeah. location finding. Yeah. It also has a whole lot of diagnostics come through, mm -hmm. uh, which enable the customers to drive seamlessly, but also have engage much better with the car. With the vehicle. And at the same time, you have uh, a phenomenal music system oh, yeah. within the car, which uh, is uh, class leading. Yeah. And uh, therefore, all of this put together, this architecture is uh, fantastic. The second thing is also the amount of uh, arcade.ev features that we can put mm -hmm. on top of it. Mm -hmm. And we've been uh, pioneers. Yeah. I mean, we brought on these features uh, yeah. for the first time in Nexon EV. Yeah. And then we've continuously been expanding uh, the arcade.ev thing. And uh, today, I think we have the highest number of uh, app suits, yeah. the highest number of functionalities yeah. uh, that we can provide. So yeah. all put together, it's a very powerful processor. It's mm -hmm. a very powerful architecture, mm -hmm. something that uh, is in line with what our customers would want. Right. And I also want to just get to know from you about the ADAS, you know, for India market. Yeah. A lot of your products are offering ADAS today. How how important it is to calibrate this safety technology according to the chaotic conditions that we see in India? It is extremely relevant because I'll, I'll give you a small example. Uh, I was driving a, a car, and let's not name the car, uh, but for example, if a, uh, if a small animal yeah. darted yeah. across the yeah. road, yeah. it would immediately slam the car brakes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, should it do that, should it not, is a matter of debate. Yeah. But it's certainly what it did was, it slammed the car brakes, and I was at about 25, 30 kilometers an hour, yeah. and I had a rear ending. Oh, uh, okay. Because the poor guy in the rear, yeah. he doesn't uh, understand that. He wouldn't have an anticipated this yeah, sort of so thing. Should we, how do we calibrate this? Yeah. What kind of uh, calibration leads you to be uh, 
to be in the realm of safety, but at the same time not within the realm of surprise. Right. I think that's a balance that needs to be hit. Right. And our roads continue to uh, throw surprises at us. Yeah. And therefore, uh, this calibration has to be done absolutely carefully. Right. And just lastly, Anand, you know, moving forward from Gen 2 to Gen 3, when you eventually adopt the EMA architecture from uh, JLR, so what sort of a technical overall are we going to see? What can we expect from Tata Motors when you switch to the EMA architecture in the Gen 3 platform? So the EMA architecture is a premium uh, pure electric or born electric uh, platform. Hmm. It, uh, so you can have, this is a pure electric or a born electric uh, at the mass end of the car. So mm -hmm. you, that is at the premium end of the car. So mm -hmm. you have much larger battery sizes. Mm -hmm. The moment you go to much larger battery sizes, then you need to also be able to charge them uh, rapidly. Faster. Faster. So, so we're looking at a 2C, 3C charging kind uh, of so, we, uh, so let's look at it from a charging time perspective. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, somewhere around a 20 minute charging okay. uh, would be uh, uh, easily possible. Mm -hmm. The uh, other thing is that you should be able to manage different uh, different uh, chemistries, different cell formats, different okay. cell sizes. Okay. So that's capability. Uh, it's also going to be uh, a twin drive okay. uh, or a twin motor drive. Right. So that's another uh, degree of enablement. Right. All put together, uh, you have the liberation of space inside. Yeah. You have much uh, a complete flat floor. Mm -hmm. You also have the ability to uh, get better couple distances. You have the ability to do very short overhangs. Right. Uh, and despite that, you have the ability to give a frunk. Right. All of these features get packed into a premium performance, premium charging experience, right. and that's how the premium right. uh, EV architecture, right. which is the EMA. Right. And premium maybe software and electronic uh, also, capabilities Also, because then as there, well. there are layers of that as well. Right. And uh, uh, that gives you a completely different functionality. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Great, Anand. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Nice talking nice to you. Talk.